Subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads. You can't insult him. It goes right over his head like an air net. Oh, what do you want? This has just come. Well, who's it from? I don't know. It's addressed to the principal. It's probably another birthday card. Good heavens. What is it? It's a threatening letter. Well, listen to this. Your days are numbered. You've promised conceited old rat but Who's he from? Well, naturally, it's unsigned. It's obviously somebody who knows you. Do you think I should uh, tell the police? I wouldn't bother. People who write that sort of letter don't usually do anything. Well, I hope you're right. Thank you, Peter. Michelle, are you doing your homework still? She's writing to her boyfriend. Mimi. Mm. He is French or English? He is French from Paris. He has eyes like Sacha de Stel, lips like Mick Jagger, and a figure like Sylvester Stallone. Has he anything of his own? Plenty. How many pages you write? Only 14. What do you find to say in 14 pages? Oh, I write about this, that, and the other. Mostly the other. I was engaged once. Stavros was his name. He was an hedonist. He was big and beautiful. But it did not last. What happened? Another man came along. Nikos. He was bigger and more beautiful. So you went off with Nikos? No, Stavros, he goes off with Nikos. Do you have the boyfriend, Anna? Nine. You have nine boyfriends? Nine. Nine. Attention, here comes Casanova Cupello. Buonasera, beautiful. Hey, is anybody sitting here? Yes, the invisible man. Can I get you a cup of coffee? No, thank you. Cup of tea? No. You sure there's nothing I can get? Sure, you can get lost. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's that? A present from your boyfriend? I wish it was. It is a mean coat for the lady I'm pairing with. Shh! Surprise from husband. What a wonderful surprise. Can we have a look? Oh, yes, I've always wanted a mean coat. Yes, you are wishing. Oh! Oh, it is beautiful. Oh, I'll do anything for a mink jacket. What would you do for mink earrings? <laughs> Not a lot. Hey, you know how most of the girls get at the mink? No. The same way a mink gets a mink. Get it? Funny, huh? Eh? Funny? No. Oh, maybe one day. One for me. Rita, will you please look after Jacket until we finish? Don't worry. Leave it with me. I'll find a safe place for it. Thank you. Buenas noches, señorita. Good evening, Miss Courtney. I am not Miss Courtney, you are. I should be obliged if while you are in this school you would all use the vernacular. Oh, dearie me, I cannot be doing that. Why not? I'm not knowing what it is. Well, it simply means that you should all speak in English. Now, I don't want to hear one more foreign word in this class. Do you understand? What is Sarah, signorina? Good afternoon, Mr. Courtney. Hey, Sarah, Mia Courtney. What's your name, Mr. Courtney? Good afternoon, Fräulein Courtney. Now, where is Miss Brown? Miss Sinop, here. I can see that. He's late again, I presume. Well, sit down, get on with some work. 
I shall stay here until he arrives. Good evening. Oh, it's you. Uh, is she in? No. Oh, good. With a bit of luck, I'll get to my class without her discovering I am late. It's her birthday. Don't I know it? She's 50. Mm. Again. <laughs> She's been coming in all week. Oh, that reminds me. Has a parcel arrived for me? No. Ah, well, we bought her a clock as a present with Westminster Chimes, only it's being engraved at the moment, and they promised to deliver it here this evening, so as soon as it arrives, let me know, would you, because we want to make a little presentation. Does she know? No, of course not. We want it uh, to be a surprise. Ah, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Mr. Brown. Ah, just caught me. You're late. Yeah, well, no, I, I've been here for ages. I've been all over the school looking for you. Really? Mm. What for? Well, I was... To wish you a happy birthday. Oh, how kind. How did you know? Oh, I uh, found out. <laughs> Class. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Miss Courtney. Thank you very much. Anything else? No. Oh, I see. Well, Mr. Brown, if you are late one more time, you're in trouble. Miss Courtney. Better tomorrow you are early. Yeah, but I couldn't help it tonight. I was held up. Oh, blimey. You have been mugged. <laughs> I mean, I was delayed at the jewellers. Miss Courtney's clock is still being engraved, but it will be here later. <laughs> Jolly good. Custom are given pleasure and not done in democratic republic. Hooked upon a bourgeois practice, I like holiday and Christmas. And in China, a heavy day is like any other day. Except on May Day, then we celebrate a creation of socialist state. Save your political lectures for the soapbox, Fu Wong, would you? You tell him, Professor. Yeah, well, I think I just... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I hope you've all written the essays I set you last week, the most moving experience of my life. My See, Professor. Good. Shall I collect the books for you? No, Michelle, for a change, I'd like you all to read your essays out aloud. The, the most, most moving experience of my life. life. Not all at the same time. Juan, would you come out here and read your essay, please? Si, yes, senor. The most moving experience of my life by Juan Cervantes para servir. Yes, get on with it. Should I? The most moving experience of my life was when I am 14 years of old. No, 14 years old. Si, 14 years old. <laughs> My father, he get a job in Madrid, and we all move. <laughs> Juan, I didn't mean that kind of moving experience. So, uh, get us on the leave. We have to go to the class in the house. Michel. Oui, Monsieur Brown. My most moving experience by Michel Dumas. This was when I was 16. <laughs> I was walking along the Bois de Boulogne. It was a beautiful spring day. And coming towards me, I see this man. He was so handsome. We stop, we look at each other. My heart starts to beat faster. He take me in his arms and we kiss. Then he take me into the trees and we kiss again. <laughs> then we lie on the grass. Yeah, I think that will do, Michel. But there is much more. Yeah, but I'll read it later. It's very moving. I'm sure it is. It was. W will be. Um... <laughs> Farouk. Yes, please. Uh, would you come out and read your essay, please? Oh, blimey, I cannot be doing that. Well, why on earth not? Because I'm not writing one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, make sure you've written one by next week, will you? Maria. Ne? Do you have a uh, moving experience to tell us about? I may have. It all depends. Uh, on what? On whether you take me out tonight. Oh, wow. yes. clock. Ah, at last. Well done. Right, come along, everybody. Presentation time. Bring it along to the canteen. Would you? Oh, Michelle, give us a couple of minutes and then ask Miss Courtney to come to the canteen. That girl. <laughs> Oh, Rita, you have done us proud, and look, it says happy birth. 
I'll run out of ice and shoot her. Yes, well, let's just hope she won't notice. <laughs> can you be seen the clock, please? Well, not until Miss Courtney opens it, but I can assure you it is beautifully engraved on the bottom. Is that Miss Courtney's bottom or the clock's bottom? <laughs> Very amusing, Giovanni. Is it ticking docking now? Yes, it's uh, set at the correct time, and uh, once it's wound up, it goes for a full eight days. Ah, that's no good. What's it going to happen after the eight days, sir? Huh? She, she winds it up again. Sorry, wrong number. Miss Courtney is all the way. Right, light the candles, Rita. Rita, where you put my mink jacket? I didn't think it was safe leaving it here, so I gave it to Mr. Enshaw. Good. You put it in your office? Not likely. Anybody could knock it off there. I put it in Miss Courtney's office. She's here. Right. Ready, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Miss Courtney. Thank you all so much. Ah, oh, don't mention it. And now... And thank you for my wonderful present. On behalf of the... Pardon? Oh, sneaking into my office when I wasn't looking. Oh, it's lovely. I've always wanted a mink coat. You could give her the clock. I give you a clock! That's enough. Losing our tempers will not solve anything. If I don't get the coat, I will get the bag. The bag? Yes, my job, I will lose. Ah, you mean the sack? Sack, bag, either way, no job I have. So we can't let that happen. Maybe we should tell Mademoiselle Courtney the truth? You are absolutely right, Michelle. The truth never hurt anybody. And she'll find out sooner or later. We should never be afraid of telling the truth. We'll write her a letter. I am thinking you are being curfew. He means you're a chicken. No, I'm not. We don't want to upset her. I mean, after all, it is her birthday. She has to be upset sometime. Yes, you're probably right, Maria. She should definitely be told the truth. Right, now, who is going to tell her? You are! <laughs> Enter! Ah, Miss Courtney. Ah, oh, Mr. Brown, I was just thinking about you. Really? Yes. There's something I want to say to yeah, well, you. There's something I have to say to you. Oh, well, um, after you. No, no, after you. No, no, I insist. What did you want to say? Well, wouldn't you like to uh, sit down? Oh, no. I don't want to crush this mink. <laughs> Go on. Well, firstly, let me say that uh, right away I have no wish to upset you on your birthday. Oh, nothing you could say today would upset me. I wouldn't bank on that. Mr. Brown, I must confess that there have been times in the past when I have thought that you were selfish and lazy and inconsiderate. Well, I am. But you aren't. I was wrong. And I want you to know that I shall never forget this birthday as long as I live. <laughs> Neither will I. Oh, it's such a wonderful present. Yeah, Miss Courtney. Call yeah. me Dolores. Pardon? Well, I think it's time we stopped being so formal. While we're in the office here alone, there's no reason why we can't be more intimate. Intimate? Yes. Well, you may call me Dolores, and uh, I shall call you Jeremy. Look, Miss Courtney. Ah. Uh, Dolores. That's better. About this mink jacket. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that. Well, I'm so overcome. It's, it's such an expensive gift you've given me. No, I didn't. Well, I know that your students must have contributed, but after all, it was your idea, wasn't it? <laughs> well, actually... And I, I... I just don't deserve it. I mean, what did I give you for your birthday last year? A ballpoint. A miserable ballpoint. Well, if it'll make you any happier, I'll take the mink back and buy you a ballpoint. It looks like another one of them letters for you. Oh, no. You have been warned I am going to get you. Oh, I really think I should tell the police. Miss Courtney, about the jacket. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Now, I don't want to crush it. I wonder if you would be kind enough to hang it up for me. 
Well, there's something I must tell you. Not now, Mr. Brown. Later. Can't you see I'm busy? Mr. Brown, any luck you have? No, I'm sorry, Ingrid. I tried to tell her, but she just uh, wouldn't let me. I go and tell her. That would not be necessary. I will tell her before school ends, uh, even if it means tying her to her chair. It's a good idea. You put on a mask and skip the jacket. We will do no such thing. Now, sit down, if you don't mind. It's time we all started learning some English. We've wasted far too much time already. So, tonight, I'm going to talk to you about figures of speech. Anybody tell me what a uh, figure of speech is? <laughs> well, if I said, as brown as a berry, what would that mean? I don't. <laughs> no one, it wouldn't. It's a figure of speech. In other words, a phrase which heightens or clarifies. Like, um, as slow as a tortoise, as quiet as a mouse. As quick as lightning. Exactly. Well done, Anna. Now, I'm going to give each of you part of a figure of speech, and I want you to complete it, all right? One. Yes, and yes. As fat as a... Elephant. <laughs> as fat as a pig. No. Elephant much fatter than a pig. <laughs> Don't argue. Shall I? Ingrid. Yeah? As blind as... A man with no eyes. <laughs> as blind as a bat. Haruk. Yes, please. As thick as... Ranjit. <laughs> Peas. Jolly good. Ranjit. As ugly as... Baro. Hey. Now, listen, you two, you're here to learn English. Not insult each other. But he's starting it. I don't care who started it. It's got to finish. Right? Michelle. Oui? As warm as... My arse. As warm as toast. My arse is much warmer. <laughs> Very likely. <laughs> Giovanni. Si, professore. As drunk as... My boss. <laughs> as drunk as a lord. You haven't met my boss. He's always drunk. Well, yes, maybe. Maria. Yes. As pretty as... How oh, English teacher? <laughs> Thank you for the compliment, but the correct answer should be as pretty as a picture. Okay. <laughs> for what? Stubborn. As happy as... Worker. No, for what? <laughs> yes, uh, all worker in China are very happy. Well, that may or may not be the case, but the correct figure of speech I was looking for was as happy as a lark, understand? Happy as a what? <laughs> I wish I was happy as the lark. Well, oh, don't worry, Ingrid. I give you my word. I will definitely tell Miss Courtney the truth before we go home. Oh. Truth about what, Mr. Brown? Ah, Miss uh, Courtney. What have you been up to now? Nothing. Tell her, Mr. Brown. <laughs> yeah, well, Miss Courtney, it is about the mink jacket. Yes, well, um, I have something to say about that. I'm afraid there has been a dreadful mistake. I'm afraid I can't accept it. You see, what happened was that Ingrid... Pardon? Well, as chairperson of the Women's Guild, I have no alternative. You see, we're against animal furs. Oh, well, that's wonderful. I mean, I mean, oh, oh, what a pity. Yes, yes, it is. Oh, I do hope you don't think I'm being ungrateful. No, no, no don't worry about it. You do understand? Yes, of course, absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much. Oh, and, um, thank you all so very much. Ingrid, I think it's your lucky day here. Yeah. Thank you. I could kiss you. Yeah, but that won't be necessary. Fun. Eh, hey, you want me to kiss you? <laughs> no. Run along to the canteen and collect the clock from Rita. I'll be back before you know I'm gone. Is she in? She's attending to herself. Come again? She's in the loo. That's what she calls it. Oh, well, this has just come for her. Not another threatening letter. All right. Time is running out. Prepare to meet thy doom. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. I wouldn't worry. I've just nabbed the bloke who's been doing it. It seems he's got a grudge against the principal for expelling him. Drunken old fool. Anyway, he won't send any more letters. How do you know? Well, in the first place, he was expelled when he was 13. And in the second place, it's the wrong school. Perdone me. I've been in your drawers. Funny. I never thought of seeing <laughs> Oh, never mind. Hey. I put clock in Miss Courtney's office and put that on her desk at the same time. So I. What were you doing in my office? Eh, I just put something on your desk with a letter Mr. Henshaw gave me. I see. Thank you very much. So I.
Your time is running out. Prepare to meet thy doom. Oh, my God. I didn't want you to pull it in her office. I wanted to make a proper presentation. Sorry, sorry. Oh, stand back. Oh, Stand back. Oh, my God. Thank you very much. Shut up. 